To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Amen. I just want to bring this word as an encouragement to somebody out there. And I know that the Lord is doing an amazing thing in your life. And it's such a beautiful time and a beautiful moment and a beautiful season to be in the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. So um, I just wanted to uh, share this because I believe this is for somebody out there. Yeah, this is for somebody out there. And I know that the Lord is basically bringing this to comfort and to encourage you because the time is now. Now is the time. And I know that in the season that we are, we are in at this point in time, the Father is accelerating so many things. And my prayer for each and every one of you is that you are able to understand the times and the seasons in order to be able to, what, to walk through what the Father is revealing to you in this hour because He loves you so very much and He doesn't want you to miss it. So that's why you have to pay attention to what, what He's speaking to you. Now, I'm going to start off with a vision that I was given, and I want to share that with the um, majority of you. So this is what the Lord is saying. So I was basically just uh, 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 in a vision where I was taken to a room, and in this room, it, it was like a bedroom, basically. And in that bedroom, there was a couple, and they were lying in bed. Yes, they were lying in bed. So the man was awake, but the woman was just about waking up. Can I repeat that? The man was awake, but the woman was just about waking up. So in the settings of this room, the curtain was drawn and right through the window, you know, you know that early morning sun. <laughs> yeah, the early morning sun, like it's just so beautiful, absolutely bright. And it was glorious. That was the what? The radiance of the sun that was manifesting into this bedroom. And it was shining over what? Over the couple. So the man basically began to what? Began to look down on the woman, you know, as she was waking up. And then eventually in that moment, you know, they began to have a conversation. So both of them at that moment, you know, she woke up, now began to speak to the man. And to God be the glory, I was taken out of that vision in itself. And here is what the father is basically trying to help majority of you to understand. You know, I'm going to basically break down the, uh, the vision for you to be able to understand it with clarity. Now, you have to understand, first of all, I'm going to go to the sun. So because the sun was shining through the window and it's basically upon the couple in this hour, this was where the father is basically helping to understand Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 1. He says, Arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. So you can see that the dimension of the sun bringing forth light is the father manifesting his light through the sun to what? To shine on the couple, helping them to understand that they have entered into a what? A realm of glory. Now, because it seemed like it's morning, can you see? It represents a new day, a new beginning. So for this couple, it's a new beginning because it's a new day. Do you see that? Behold, I do a new thing. Can you what? Can you not see it? So the father is manifesting something new over this couple. Now, the amazing part of it is the man was awake, but the woman was waking up from a sleep. And that is why the Bible tells us in the book of Ephesians, I believe in chapter five, it says, awake, O sleeper, that Christ may shine on you. Do you see that? So it says, awake, O sleeper, that Christ may shine on you. So this is the woman waking up. So Christ is eventually what? Manifesting in the life of this woman and waking her up. Hence why she's waking up into glory. Yes, because the glory of the Lord has risen upon her. And the reason for this is because the bed. The bed represents a place of, you know, the Bible tells us in the book of Second Corinthians, it says a marriage bed undefiled. Can you see? Because the bed represents a place of intimacy. So the bed, intimacy. The bed, intimacy. It's a place where couples sit down or they basically have conversations and intimate conversations away from the crowd. So the woman waking up and both of them, they began to have a conversation. So this is where the father is basically encouraging majority of the people that for majority of you. Now, I'm going to help you to understand why this is in the book of Genesis and chapter what and chapter two. It says here, I'm going to read from what I believe I'm not reading the whole from verse 22. It says, and the rib which the Lord had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man.
Can I repeat that? It says in verse 21, And the Lord caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam, and he slept. And he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord had taken from the man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. <laughs> so the woman is not your rib of your ribs. <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Can you see that dimension? I'm just using this to explain the process of what is going on. So this woman has been asleep. And eventually, the light shining on her, she rose up. And eventually, can you see, waking up to the man, they began to have a conversation. So this is what the father is helping majority of the kingdom spouse in this hour, who have either been separated for one reason or the other. So the Lord is extending an invitation. Can you see that? The Lord is extending an invitation. And this is the invitation that the Lord is extending in this hour. According to Esther, chapter 8 and verse 4. And he says, I then, and the king held out the gold scepter to Esther. So she rose and stood before him. Can you see that? <laughs> to God be the glory. So you can see how it's all coming together. He says, again, the king held out the gold scepter to Esther. So she, aro she rose and stood before him. So this is where the father is helping majority of kingdom partners that have been separated. Yes, that the father is once again giving you the opportunity to reconcile. So the reason why that had to happen in the first place was because the Lord had been doing work in different, you know, in, on, in different partners. So upon the man, he has been doing the work. Upon the woman, he has been doing the work. And now, can you see, the father is extending that opportunity again for the woman to come into the presence of the man. So the man has been awake all the while. So it's, it's you know, either the woman or the man. One of you have been doing what God has called you to do. You've been obedient to do doing what God called you to do. You've been doing it faithfully. You've been going at it and you've been asking the Lord, Father, this woman that you gave me, you know, is she going to basically come in alignment with what you've called me to do? You know, and she has been in a place where, or he has been in a place where they were asleep for a moment. Do you see that? Because the Father had not woken them up yet. No, he had not yet woken them up. But now, according to the vision, the woman rose up. So this is where the Father is helping majority of you all to understand that your kingdom spouse has risen up to God be the glory. She has awakened, awakened to the understanding of who she is, awakened to the understanding of who he is, awakened to the understanding that both of you are supposed to be together, awakened to the understanding that you're supposed to do ministry, you're supposed to do business, you're supposed to start family together. So they have awakened to the knowledge of the will of the Father concerning what he has commanded you both to do. Do you see that dimension? So for that reason, according to the vision, she eventually what? She eventually woke up and then was brought to the man. So you can see that in Esther chapter 8 verse 4, she was brought to the man. In Genesis chapter 22, she was brought to the man. So majority of you who have been separated. So for the one who basically caused the separation, yes, for the one who caused the separation, this is where the father is basically extending an opportunity to that person to once again come because it is through their coming and their obedience that will bring restoration to what the father is in intending to do in this hour so one person is awake and one person caused the what the separation so the lord is extending his scepter once again to the person who basically caused that separation yes to come into the presence of the man hence why the woman in the vision woke up to the presence of the man do you see the new beginning the father is basically giving majority of you now, you have to understand what I mean by kingdom spouse. I'm not talking about relationships that you were once in that was not the will of the father and the father had to move the person on. No, not that relationship. Because for majority of you, God has shown you who your kingdom spouse is. And he has what? He has brought you together. But for some reason, one way or the other, yes, there was a separation that manifested. Yes. And for that reason, the person who caused the separation. Can you see? It says, and the woman, yes, was brought unto the man. In Esther 8, chapter 4, the king ex uh, extended the scepter and the woman came before the king. Esther, 
came before the king. So this is what the father is saying. Whether it was the man or the woman who caused the separation, the father is giving them that opportunity and he has given them the word to come before your presence. Why? Because it's a new day. And in a place of intimacy, it is reconciliation that is happening so the father is reconciling in this hour and this is another opportunity so i believe the father has given an opportunity the first time they have not taken it for whatever reason but the lord is extending it because as i was basically recording this word i begin you know the father was reminding me second chance this was the second chance i believe he has called them before but they refused you know <laughs> and the father is basically calling again and he's saying you know i'm calling you into this present moment because I have awakened you. I've given you the order. I've given you the instruction. Now it's time for you to come into the presence of that person because you know why? It's time for that reconciliation to what? To happen. That is why I put it as a disclaimer. If God has told you that that person is not yours and they have walked away from you, please don't go and open that door again. <laughs> Do you see that dimension? I beseech you by the mercies of God. I just wanted to put it out there. So, you know, if the Lord has allowed them to go, yeah, please, you know, yeah, be obedient to that. Amen. I love you all so very much because I don't want anyone to miss it in, and you will not miss it in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. So, be expectant majority of you in this hour for those who have been awakened and they've continued to do what god has called them to do you know be expectant because at any moment in time the phone call is going to come at any point in time that email is going to come through at any point in time that person is going to come knocking and they're going to what they're going to want to have a conversation with you do you see that? And this is why I keep encouraging majority of you. The Father, according to John chapter 1, has given us grace upon grace. And just like the Father whose son went away and then, what? He made up his mind to return home. And the Father was just so happy to see him. You know, for some of these people, they've been through so much. They've been through refining. They've been through where the Father has been dealing with them. And I ask you to, by, your, by, the, by the mercies of the living God, to extend grace to this ones please do extend grace love them for where they are because the father has done amazing work and he has done what he needs to do he has refined them for some of them they had to be humbled and he has humbled them and for some of them the father has to take them through a refining process and they have what they have persevered and they have endured hence the reason why the father is reconciling so that you can move what forward Amen. In Jesus' mighty name. So be expectant, majority of you. And I bless you in the mighty name of Jesus that this in itself, to the glory of the Lord, he will manifest it in greater dimension so that you can move forward. And I just bless that union with the glory of I am. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. I love you so very much. You are the blessedness of the Father. And I pray that this reconciliation, that the Father will glorify it. He says, Father, glorify your name it says i will glorify i have glorified it so i have glorified that reconciliation and i will glorify it again so this is where the father is glorifying it again can you see that and i pray that this will be quickened for you to enter into what god has ordained for you your marriage or whatever it is that the father has prepared for you that there'll be so much joy right in it and i surround it completely with the wall of fire in jesus mighty name i love you so much and i pray that you have a blessed wonderful glorious Glorious and an amazing, wonderful day. In Jesus' name, I love you all. Stay blessed.